learning is really interesting. I know, I'd be letting my 188 subscribers down. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I want more subscribers. Um, all right, so this is how this works. We're gonna create vectors and then we're gonna do what some of you, it sounds like already know how to do just to represent this. And we can check this off our to-do list. It shouldn't take more than a, a day at the most. So um, how would you draw a vector for this complex number, like let's call this complex number like z sub one, and then we'll call this other vector or this other complex. Sorry, I keep saying that, but it's kind of where we're headed. And then this complex number can be z two. What would the vector look like for z one? Right, so you might need a ruler, but you can also freehand it, which of course just be fine. So I'm gonna go right one, and I'm going to go down three, and I'm actually going to make my graph a little bit bigger because I want to. Oh, that's so much better. Uh, so I'm going to start by drawing the purple vector, and it's going to go from the complex origin, so zero, zero. It's going to go right one, and it's going to go down one, two, three. So when it comes to actually graphing a complex number, if it's just the point that you want, that's fine. Um, but we're going to use it for an operation like this. We want to draw it in as a vector. So I'll just freehand it like you would with a pencil. So your vector for Z1 looks like this. Remember, vectors have, just like in the Despicable Me or whatever, the magnitude and direction, right? Not the thing. Yeah? yeah. So that is our Z1 vector. And we're going to go to the origin now. And this this step, uh, you'll agree after this example, this step technically is a waste of time. But I'm going to kind of do it by the book, and then we're going to skip this next time. So what is Z2? How do we get there? Right. So we're going to go left, one, two, three, four, and up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make a mark there. And this is a lot easier with a ruler. And I'm actually going to cheat this time and use my straight line drawing tool. So take that. Okay. So what we have now is we have our two vectors drawn. We have Z1 and we have Z2. And the math problem that's being asked of us here is to illustrate Z1 plus Z2. So this is where we use the tip to tail method. And I know that you said you've done this in physics before. Just curiosity, how many of you did this and have done vector addition in physics? Oh, so just a few. Oh, gosh. Well, that's really enlightening. I, I was just going to about to start carrying on like you knew this. So the hoof, So in math, physics, whatever, when you add two vectors together, you use something called the tip to tail method. And so a vector has two parts. It has a tip uh, and it has a tail. And the tip of the vector is like where the, the final point is at. The tail is like any animal or whatever. It's like the, the, on the backside of the vector. So the tail of a vector is kind of where it starts and the tip of the vector is where it goes to. We good? So if we're gonna do the tip to tail method, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the red vector Z2 and we're going to put its tip, excuse me, its tail on the tip of the purple vector. Now I have an advantage over you, so just kind of hang out while I do this, and you're welcome to, you know, cry foul because again I get to cheat a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to draw it again. Oh, sorry about that. And that's negative four plus six i. So what you do is you take this vector and you move it, or in your case, probably redraw it in such a way that it spawns itself now from the tip of the other vector. If you haven't taken like a physics class yet, if you do anything that involves forces, physics, that kind of stuff, you're going to do a lot with vectors, screwing around with combining vectors with each other. So to show this math problem graphically, if I wanted to do z1 plus z2, I would do tip to tail and I apply the vector like this. And once you apply the second vector to the tip of the first vector, then the, watch out now, here comes some vocabulary. I guess you probably need to know this word. The resultant vector is the green vector. And the answer to a math problem like this 
is going to be illustrated by the resultant vector. I know I could have drawn that probably bigger, my bad. But the green vector is the one that is at the tip of, trying to choose my words here, it's at the tip of the second half of the problem, if you will. Think of it like a journey, kind of. If, you, if it gets confusing, just think of it like a journey. The first leg of the journey is to travel the purple vector, you know, to go to that right one down three spot. And then the second leg of the journey is to shoot back up to the northwest to head up six and, and left, whatever that is, four. Anyways, you can see it is kind of neat. It's probably not going to like change your whole world and make you say, wow. But you can clearly see that where the green vector ends is at this big green point right here. And as we surmised at the beginning, the name of that point is, well, negative three, three, which as a complex number, we would call negative three plus three. So that's half the mission. And honestly, it's more than half the mission because the other part of this mission is really just pretty simple. Did I just lose you or was that pretty straightforward? Good, good. The other half of this, so if you would be so kind, maybe pick a different graph now. Let's head to a second grid. We're going to learn how to do vector subtraction. And can I erase this yet, or do you, do you need another minute? Good? OK. So a lot of times, um, I don't really do this because I teach high school, but I know that a lot of times, like if I were like a third grade or fourth grade teacher, and I were teaching students how to subtract, um, especially students that maybe were struggling with the concept of subtraction. It's a fact in mathematics that if I had a student that was struggling with like five minus uh, two, it can happen, right? Little kids, right? Um, a lot of teachers employ that the idea, like you can teach little kids that subtraction can mean something else. Do you guys remember another way to say five minus two? Not really where I was wanting to go with that. What's another way to say subtraction? It's some minus. Yeah, you're just looking for the words. I'm not looking for like a different word. There's a different mathematical way to perform subtraction. No. Nope. Clearly, my question sucks. And so when the, your answers are as dog water as those ones were, that's no one's fault but mine. I accept it. My bad. What I'm trying to get you to say is that at some point in your life, somebody, not me, because I hate it, somebody taught you that five minus two is the same as five plus negative two. That's, that, well, hopefully you're not seeing that for the first time. Like, is that true? Yes, that's true. Are we all on the same page there? Some people still embrace that into their older years, like into high school. Some people still like to say, like, is that okay if I put three minus negative four, three plus negative four? And it's like, I guess if you really want to, but it's pretty weird, right? Do you guys all agree, though, that plus negative is the same as minus? So long story short, did you not know that? Oh, you didn't know? Didn't they? Seventh grade, then. <laughs> Seventh grade's kind of like elementary. It's like big kid elementary. <laughs> right. Well, that was an awkward few minutes. I hope you guys understand now what I'm trying to say. And that is that subtraction, long story short, can be represented by the addition of an opposite. So let's get right to it. So we're going to write a subtraction problem with vectors. Um, and again, I'm trying to keep it in the pocket of the, the, the graph that we have to work with. So we'll keep our numbers relatively close by. Let's do like 5 minus 2i minus 3 uh, plus i. So I guess what I want to say to you is this, that we don't technically subtract vectors from one another. What we do is we add the opposite of the second vector. And so when you're faced with this situation, uh, probably not today, but like on Monday or on our test that we'll eventually take, uh, we're not going to perform this operation directly. 
what we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge that this is five minus two i plus, but really if we change it to plus, who's the second vector going to be? Negative three minus i, good job. Vector subtraction, you know, I say this sometimes in math, like division doesn't really exist. Division is the multiplication of a reciprocal. Like subtraction doesn't really exist. It's addition of an opposite. So that's what we want to go to here. So let's practice one more and then I think we can probably just be done. Um, so let's, let's call, I'll color code this again. Let's call this like Z1 and then purple guy can be C2. And again, we already know the answer. It's not like this is a big like surprise what's about to happen. Like you could look right at it and say, oh, the answer is what? Two minus three, I oh, let's look. Um, let's, let's verify it graphically. The path. So how would I graph Z1? Right five down two, good for you. Is anybody lost by the way? Are we okay? All right, so we're gonna go right one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna go down two. And I'm gonna draw that vector. And I'm not gonna put arrowheads on my vector. It's not to set a bad example. I'm just, since I'm gonna grab things and move them, the arrowheads won't move. So there, yeah. sorry, don't do what I do. You guys should put arrows, it's better. All right, uh, so there's Z1. How are we gonna grab Z2? Left three down one. So I think what I wanted to show you this time is why don't we cut right to it? I said this 10 minutes ago about how we would start skipping a step. I think, and you would agree, it feels wasteful to graph the second vector at the origin, right? Because what are we going to do with it anyway? We're going to move it anyways. So what we ought to do is graph the purple vector, Z2, just right off the tip of Z1. You picking up what I'm putting down there? So I'm going to head right up here to the, the uh, tip of vector Z1. And from that point, I'm going to graph my second, the purple vector, which is what? Where do I go from right here where I'm moving my pen? Left three, down one, good. You don't go from the origin, one, two, three, down one, like this. Okay. And so remember that it, there's nothing on the board right now that is, or, or on your paper, there, the answer isn't on the board, right? But the work is, and now if we wanna find the answer, what's that, what's that new vector coming in called? Do you remember his name? Very good. Let me write it down for you because it's not fair if I say a word and expect you to know what in the world I said. This green vector that I'm about to draw is called the resultant vector. So it's the result of the operation that we're performing. And it looks like this. I feel like I can almost just sit here today and say I can check this off my to-do list. I'm getting a vibe like this is not much, is it? Okay, so what that is, is we just are graphically illustrating the process of adding or subtracting two vectors by graphing them both tip to tail. And then the resultant vector connects the beginning of the journey to the end of the second leg of the journey. And then you could verify to somebody that this vector right here has a horizontal component of two and a vertical component of negative three. Therefore, as we suspected, the answer is two minus three pi. We can see it from the green vector. Pretty revolutionary. Yes, ma'am. Let me draw my arrows so that you can, because that was pretty unprofessional of me to not do that. So here it goes. Are you ready? The red vector is going to have an arrowhead right here. It's, it essentially marks the direction of the journey. So the journey began with us leaving from the center and going right five and down two. You agree? Now from the tip of that vector, we're going to continue our journey down in the left and down direction. So the purple vector should have a direction like that. I don't know if we just said the same thing, but the yeah, end... Of I will not do that to you in addition. Um, the only reason I just hit that in multiplication because it was kind of all I had. 
for now, trying to connect to a standard. Um, it was honestly a couple minutes that I almost wish I had back. And the multiplication, the way I showed it to you is a little bit odd. It's awkward. You'll enjoy and appreciate the multiplication more when we're able to actually flex and do it ourselves. It's pretty amazing, but not yet. So does that make sense? So the end of the journey on this is where the resultant vector should go. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? We, we could practice. Maybe I'll whip you up a little bit of practice for Monday, um, but I'd like to move on to maybe something else. I might surprise you on Monday, um, depending on what I kind of come up with in my mind. But I think Monday we're probably going to, there's a decent chance we're going to leave complex numbers for a while. And we're either going to hit the functions and their inverses. What sounds more fun? Functions and their inverses or some trigonometry? You want to get tricky with it? I could, unless you go to Oh. Well, I can't have this conversation because I'm still recording. So. All right, I guess your input was very limited, so I'll probably just go ahead. Doesn't trig sound fun? What a great, we could just learn the unit circle and we could learn. So like when I say uh, go to five pi over six, you just go boop and you know right where to go. I, I think it would be really empowering for us. We, we don't have to do full trig, like amplitudes of cosecant functions and stuff. We can go just enough to arm ourselves with the unit circle. Baby, a baby trig. Maybe we'll do a little baby trig next couple of weeks. That sound fun, dude? All right. Well. <laughs>